So, you want to get a 9950X3D because you heard it's the best gaming CPU money can buy. But what if I told you that wasn't really the case? And if you aren't really looking to spend $700 on just the CPU, then maybe some of the following will be more fitting depending on your needs. And first, we have the Ryzen 3, which is the entry level or budget gaming option. Think of it as your first car ever that your parents got you. It's not the most powerful, but it gets you from point A to point B. It's ideal for tasks like web browsing, office apps, watching videos or movies, making video calls, and some light gaming. Usually these have 4 cores and 8 threads, but the early ones had 4 cores and 4 threads. Today, however, you can only find the 4 core 8 thread ones, which means you can handle a few tasks at once. But don't expect them to be super amazing or anything. It will do just fine. Although it would likely be discontinued, the last of it being the 8000 series. It's affordable and gets the job done. Just don't act surprised when it won't keep up with any heavy demanding games. That's not what this is for. Light gaming is where it's at. After all, you don't buy a Corolla and expect it to be as fast as a Bugatti, no? And stepping up from the budget entry level, we have the Ryzen 5. This is where things are getting amped up a bit. The Ryzen 5 is like the middle child, but except in this case, the middle child is actually the favorite one. This series has 6 cores and 12 threads, making it excellent for everyday multitasking, smooth modern gaming and light content creation. This is a CPU that will let you try out some more demanding games while also letting you dip your toes into some of those creative applications. If the Ryzen 3 is your first car, Ryzen 5 is when you can afford to get your own car and now you can game at 1080p with no problem. Even in more demanding titles. You can also do some video editing and also stream. It balances price and performance so well that it seems to be the most popular option today. And there's also the X3D variant to this series that helps your gaming performance even more. That is, if the price is worth it for you. We are currently at the 9th gen, and this will probably become the next entry level CPU after Ryzen 3 gets phased out. It fits the needs of most people while not breaking the bank. It's best for gamers, editors or streamers just starting out, or anyone who wants a shoe that fits all sizes without emptying your pockets. Next level up, there's the Ryzen 7 that comes with 8 cores and 16 threads, and it's meant for people who are serious about performance. If you're editing 4K videos, doing 3D modeling, streaming, demanding games, or heavy multitasking, Ryzen 7 is the one to look out for. Think of the Ryzen 7 as finally getting your dream car. You're not just driving it, you're living it. Streaming, recording, editing, and uploading, all of those won't be a problem from now on. Things will just get done. Ryzen 7 is like bringing a gun to a knife fight. You know it'll make things easy, but you use it anyway because you don't want the hassle. X3D variants also exist for this series, although they are a bit more pricey. This is overkill for casual tasks, but it's fun to have. Serious content creators, professionals or serious gamers who need the grunt without the wine, this is for you. And will probably make your PC last for quite a while, also. Ryzen 9. Now we got to the top of the line that also has a 3D variant by the way, with 12 to 16 cores, depending on which one you look at. This baby is built for big amounts of workload. <laughs> Ideal for 4K gaming, professional content creation, AI workloads, simulations, uh, anything needing strong multi-core performance, things that the vast majority of people never really do. Ryzen 9 is like having your very own Formula 1 car. Pretty pointless for daily use, you don't even have a place for groceries, but it's great when it's being used by a professional and it works like a charm. Getting a Ryzen 9 only for gaming is like asking Eddie Hall to carry your grocery bags. He can do it no problem, but he's not even using 5% of his capabilities. It is great for high-end content creators and professionals that depend on their PC to make a living. Or the kind of gamer who simply has way too much money to care. And that's about all of them. Except that last one that is waiting in the dark shadowy corner. I'm talking about the Threadripper. I don't know about you, but to me the name kinda sounds like it belongs to a mysterious murderer in the 1800s. Which I don't think that anyone who made it this far into the video cares about, but here we go anyway. 
This is the best AMD has to offer. They pretty much had someone come in that said, I need more cores. They asked how many and did not wait for an answer, so they threw this in their face. 96 cores with 192 threads, it is designed for ridiculously massive rendering tasks, simulations, CAD animations, 3D modeling, but just you name it. If you need this for gaming, you better be playing a game in which you design a game within a game within another game that is running a simulation on how the planetary systems affect the mating rituals of ducks. Or something along those lines. This is not for you, just forget this exists and be happy you don't have to pay $10,000 for one of these. And the TDP on these is just 350 watts. Still, it's odd how that is still lower than the 5090. And you know what's the worst part of it? You don't even get a cooler to go with it, man. I mean, come on. For that kind of a price tag, at least give me a cooler. So to sum everything up, the Ryzen 3 is great for tight budgets and handles the basics without fuss. Ryzen 5 is a solid all-rounder and a sweet spot for gamers and mainstream users. Ryzen 7 delivers premium performance and still at a reasonable price, which is great for gamers and multitaskers, and the Ryzen 9 is a professional grade and excels where you need robust multi-core and high clock speeds, like AI tasks, 4K editing and heavy streaming. And then there's the Threadripper, which is kinda pointless for everyone watching this video, but is an extreme workstation, overkill for most, but perfect if you're doing 3D rendering, simulations or scientific computing. Comment down below what category of user you fall into. And don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you and I'll see you next time.